Okay, now that you have a background on the somatosensory system and how signals are created in um, mechanoreceptors and nociceptors and how we get that to the brain, we're just going to kind of spend a little time on the specifics of pain. Um, so our first section is talking about first order neurons. When we talk about the order of neurons and give numbers to them, we're talking about the order that they get uh, stimulated. Okay, so really first order neurons are just another word for the afferent or the sensory nerves. Okay, so we're talking about taking something from a receptor and putting it on the afferent, the sensory nerve, to get it to the spinal cord. Okay, so that, um, that is where our focus is right now. So when we talk about transmission of pain, and the steps that we go through transmission of pain, first order neurons are right there in the beginning. So the first order neurons are gonna be the ones that synopsis with the receptors. So all those different receptors that, that the videos talked about. Um, specifically here, we're gonna be talking about the nocio receptors. And then they're the primary afferent, so those primary sensory nerves. And they're taking that information, that signal, that's created from the receptor and transmitting it towards the spinal cord, specifically to the dorsal horn of the spinal cord and an area known as the substantia gelatinosa or the SG as we'll call it. Okay. So a couple things before we talk specifically about these nerves and, and name these nerves. Things you need to know about the sensory receptors and these, and also the afferent nerves that they travel on. Accommodation. When we talk about accommodation, we're talking about the fact that over time, and in this case, maybe we're talking modalities, so thinking like one treatment session, that receptor and its afferent nerve are going to be, so the first order neuron, are going to actually lose their ability to depolarize the tissue with the same intensity and duration of the stimulus. So basically, those receptors get used to having that stimulus, and so they kind of be like, oh, this is no big deal, old hat, we don't need to send this signal all that um, same intensity that it was sending before. And so it becomes harder for us to send that signal. And so we'll see this when we start talking about e-stim. When we put the electrical stimulation on someone, over time, over that treatment, we might have to go and turn up the intensity because that nerve fiber is going to become accommodated to that signal and it's not going to send it with the same intensity and have thus have the same physiological effect that we would want. Now reverse that with sensitization. And this is over a long period of time. So this would be over like weeks or months of having this condition. If we're thinking about a pain, so being um, stimulated by the nocio receptors that, that indicating that someone has pain, um, over the long period, that afferent nerve and its receptor achieve depolarization using lower intensity. So basically this is kind of the positive feedback idea that, well, if we're constantly sending this signal over this highway, right, over this afferent nerve, Think of it like a plow, unplowed street. First time we go, you have to really create those ruts and it's really hard. The more and more that someone drives over it, the easier it is to get through. And so we achieve depolarization easier. The car gets through the road easier because those ruts are created because we're constantly using it. So it's positive feedback. So this was kind of what we talked about um, in the last video where we were talking about having to... Um, Think about the hyperesthesia and hypo, uh, hyperalgesia of an injured tissue, that it becomes sensitized to that signal. The signal strength itself, we've talked about this when we talked about nerve, um, the nervous system in the first chapter as well. The signal strength is all or nothing, right? Like, so, or the synopsis is all or nothing. If it's gonna, the action potential is going to reach a certain level, neurotransmitters are gonna go across, they're gonna connect with the receptors, and the signal's gonna get through. If there's more um, neurotransmitters in the area, the signal doesn't get stronger. What makes the signal stronger is the number of nerve fibers stimulated. 
Okay, so the single nerve is still going to send the same signal each time. But if we have now have five or a hundred of these nerves going, that's going to create a stronger signal. And then also the frequency at which those nerves are firing. Okay, so if we send the signal, it sends the neurotransmitters, it sends the signal across, and then there's time for the neurotransmitters to get sucked back up, and then a signal comes and it goes. That's not going to feel as intense as if there's a, this constant stimulation or close to constant high frequency stimulation where the neurotransmitters can barely even leave the receptors and they're put right back in. It's going to feel more constant and it's going to feel stronger. So those two things create the signal strength. So even though that the synopsis is this all or nothing um, situation, the sensation and the signals can be, um, can be achieve uh, more strength if we have more nerves and if we have more frequency. Okay, so talking about the nociroceptors, the mechanical re nociroceptors and the polymodal no nociroceptors. So back in the video when they were talking about the different nociroceptors, this is what we're talking about. So we really have two major types that send nerve signal, or I should say pain signal, to the brain. The mechanical ones are the A-delta fibers. Okay. Now these words might sound a little similar. Remember I told you in chapter one that there was that chart, that we were going to come back to that chart. So look back at that chart. Um, I think it's table 1.7 in, in chapter one, and it will show you kind of all the different nerves. Specifically, we're going to focus on the A deltas and the Cs as well as A betas, and I'll show you that in a different chart here in a second. But those mechanical nociroceptors are the A delta fibers. They get stimulated from a strong mechanical displacement of the skin. They also have a really high threshold um, for that. So they're typically pretty small in diameter. They're lightly myelinated, um, and they transmit mechanical pressure, temperature extremes, or ischemic pain. Okay, They transmit relatively quickly, So, or I should say they transmit pain that comes on quickly, so what we call fast pain. So their speed is actually relatively slow compared to some of the bigger fibers, but they transmit pan, pain that comes on quickly. So if that nociroceptor is uh, stimulated quickly, that's usually an A delta uh, fiber that transmits. So it's usually described, people would describe that pain as sharp and really localized. C fibers, or the polymodal nociroceptors, take on lots of different stimuli. So there's d several different types of stimuli they can do. They do the mechanical pressure. They do extreme temperatures. They also take on the chemicals. So when we talk about the inf inflammation pain, so the five signs of inflammation, that type of pain from the chemical mediators, that's usually a C fiber that gets stimulated there. They're smaller in diameter, even smaller than the A deltas. Um, they're unmyelinated, which means, again, thinking about myelation, those are the Schwann cells and the covering that usually helps speed the transmission, so they don't have that. Um, and they usually transmit slow, dull, non-localized, and diffuse pain. So here's just a different look at that. This is a chart that has some typical sensory fibers on it. The ones in blue are the ones we mainly focus on for modalities. Um, the A-betas. That's your sense of touch and kinesthesia, knowing where your body is in space and how your muscles are functioning um, kind of in their, their world. There are muscle spindle fibers, kind of secondary endings in there. Notice that their diameter is fairly large. So we're talking micrometers, so we're not, you know, everything's relative, but compared down here to those C fibers that we'll talk about. And their velocity is, is very quick, so 40 to 70 meters per second. Now when we look at the A deltas, we see that they're smaller, they're slower, and there again are pain, crude touch, pressure, temperature, and again that kind of sharp, stabbing, localized pain. And then we have our C fibers, and the C fibers are the smallest of all, they're the slowest of all, and again pain, touch, but again more pressure, temperature, and more polymodal, so again, the postganglionic, autonomic, they're involved with the autonomic nervous system, the chemicals, things like that. So basically, the A-betas are fairly large, fast, and respond to touch. The A-deltas and Cs are small, the Cs are very small, they're slow, the Cs are very slow, and they respond to pain and temperature um, and harmful mechanical pressure. So we'll actually, talk about using 
stimulation of these different fibers, not only that they um, transmit pain, but how we use those to potentially control pain as well. So the nocio uh, receptor would activate the A delta and C fibers. They'd relay that information to the central nervous system. And that's then the interpretation of pain that we would get once it gets up to what we call the higher centers. So just to kind of, again, get you into thinking about where we are here. So when we talk about the afferent nerves coming in, this is that dorsal root ganglion. So this is going to be um, where kind of the cell body of these afferent nerves is going to be located. So you're going to have the sensory uh, proprioceptive or nociceptive receptor out in the skin or the muscle or wherever it might be. And then it's going to transfer through that afferent nerve. So specifically in this case, the, um, the dendrites, right, of that afferent nerve are going to transmit through the nerve. So this is your spinal nerve, right? So this would come, let's say you cut your, uh, you get a cut or hurt your bicep, right? So this is going to travel along the muscular cutaneous nerve, okay, that innervates your bicep. That going to connect to other nerves. If you think about the um, brachial plexus, it's going to transmit up into more and more nerves. And eventually you get to, in the biceps case, C5 or C6 of the spinal cord level. And so it comes in. That's all the dendrites. The cell body would be here, and then these would be the axons in this little bit that would then come into the gray matter of the spinal cord, specifically, again, on the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. Okay, sometimes also posterior. So this is through the back that that sensory is going to come in. The efferents, when we talk about the stimulation and, and coming back out, they come through the ventral part or the anterior part of the spinal cord. Now where those nerves come in, A deltas and C fibers are actually going to come in in different spots. C fibers are going to come in what we call lamina 1 and lamina 2. Okay, so again, this is reversed here. So this is posterior, this is anterior. And you see all those motor nerves up here. So it's going to come into kind of this area of the dorsal horn of the um, spinal cord. The A deltas are going to come in more at level five. So all these different nerves have kind of different places they connect because then there's going to be different what we call inner neurons, which are just kind of uh, connector neurons that are going to be running that signal to where they need to go based on how it comes in. Over here we have really what is um, one of the highways. So there's two major highways that pain signal gets up to our brain. This one is the spinal thermatic uh, track. Um, there's also the um, paraspinal brachial track. We're going to mainly focus on the spinal uh, thermatic uh, track. And this one's it's just called lateral because it, it runs on the lateral side. Um, but what we see here is that pain signal coming in on that first order neuron. So again, through here's the cell body inside the dorsal root ganglion, and that sensation comes in and comes into if this is an A delta to lamina five, or comes in C fibers to the one and two. That's all we're focused on so far is this little red arrow. That's our first order neuron. The pain or temperature sensations, in this case, coming from the right side of the body. And from there is where it's going to actually then synopsis with what we would call second order neurons, which is then what's going to transmit that signal up into our brain in order to get the response or the perception of pain. What can also happen is we can have um, a connection to uh, the straight out to the motor neuron and either on this level or on the level right above or right below or several levels above or below that's what those inner neurons can really do is take that signal and transmit it to multiple areas that's how we get reflex uh, reflexes which what we would call polysynaptic so again here's that afferent nerve coming in and this is all the role of this inner neurons so we get the reception, it sends up, it goes towards the cell body that's sitting in the dorsal root ganglion, that comes into the gray matter of the spinal cord or the SG, and then you have inner neurons in there that are going to make the connection. That's going to be our second order neurons that we're going to talk about in a minute. 
but some of those second order neurons are really short. They go straight to an efferent nerve. And that's how we get a reflex where we don't even have cognitive activity because that inner neuron isn't taking that information up to the brain. It's just going straight out. So think about the um, reflex, the patellar tendon reflex, right? The sensor, the receptor feels that the tendon is getting stretched based on us using the hammer. It sends that signal and without even any conscious um, effect, we automatically have a muscle contraction because that efferent nerve comes out and tells the muscle, we're about to get overstretched. That's what it feels like, right? That tendon is getting stretched, the muscle could potentially get injured. So if we contract, the tendon's gonna shorten and it won't get stretched. That's what happens in that reflex. Now that can happen just at one level. That inner neuron could send it up to a level above or below, kind of depending on what innervation that muscle would have. So, you know, when we talk innervations, when you did your anatomy and kinesiology, right, you had that the um, femoral nerve, you know, innervated this, but then there was also that nerve root behind it, so like L4, L5, or something like that. That's the level that that part of that efferent nerve is going to come out of. And so the inner neuron takes it to where it needs to be. That's also, think about if you like hear a loud sound, right? So the receptor is the sound, in this case, that we experience that sends in the efferent nerve. We jump without even consciously realizing it. Well, that takes several different levels for that reaction to occur, and those inner neurons do that. What we will also see is this other inner neuron over here that's crossing over to the cell body, or sorry, crossing over the spinal cord. This inner neuron over here is potentially causing response to the other side of the body or potentially sending it up to the signal. So eventually we realize, hey, my quad contracted, okay? After the action has already happened, but it does get processed in our brain, okay? So eventually that inner neuron does take it up, but just initially we get that response before we even get cognitive control. So next up in the next video, we are gonna talk about second order neurons. So how does that information get up into the spinal cord?